Hi, this is David with B&H, and today we're here with Mike from Sony to take a hey. look at their new product lineup. Now, this Great. is huge. This, this is huge. Thanks for having me, by the way. So, this is one of the biggest announcements that Sony's ever made, not just in digital imaging, but Sony in general. So digital imaging is one of Sony's main priorities right now, and this is our, our, our step in the right direction. It's the Sony 7, Alpha 7, Alpha 7R, and RX10. Now, the 7 and 7R are the world's smallest and lightest full-frame cameras ever made. And by full frame, you mean a full 35 millimeter imaging sensor? I mean full 24 by 36 millimeter sensor that people are used to in much larger, uh, much more expensive cameras. So, so larger depth of field or like a wider field of view yep. too? Uncompromised depth of field, uncompromised image quality, uncompromised versatility, just everything you would want in a camera made in pocket size, palm size. This is great. And, so. and the lens mount is the Sony E mount, which we remember from yeah. the NEX cameras, it's, it's the same kind of lens mount. Yep. So it's the E-mount system that everyone's been used to in the NEX line, but it's actually not the first time we've come out with this mount. We've had it in the VG900. So it's the first time that we made it into a still camera, and we actually are offering, at introduction, we're going to have five lenses for the camera, and then down the road, we're going to have 15 more lenses added by 2015. We're, we're definitely driven to create this line and to be able to establish it and make it one of our biggest priorities. The 7 and 7R, they look almost exactly the same. Can you tell us about what the differences are? The 7 the and 7R physically, they look exactly the same. So they almost look identical. If you didn't see the logo on it, it is the same camera. So the biggest difference is the sensor itself. So the 7R is similar to the RX1 and the RX1R, where we actually took away the optical low-pass filter. The 7R is 36 megapixels, so it's one of the highest resolution cameras out there. It also takes away the optical low-pass filter, which gives you a um, seemingly much higher resolution, much sharper images. But what it does is, since we took it away, it's able to give you much higher detail, much higher contrast ratio. So you're going to be able to get just unsurpassed image quality from it. So if I'm shooting so. still life or if I'm shooting landscape, exactly. little details like blades of grass or leaves, they're going to they're come out look much sharper. It's going to be unbelievable. It's going to look like you shot it with a sensor that's much larger than that. Oh my so. goodness. Now the 7, it does have its own unique advantages as well. It doesn't have the same resolution. It's 24 megapixels. But the 7 actually has, uh, on the chip itself, on the sensor itself, it actually has phase detection autofocus. So we built phase detection autofocus into the sensor itself. So similar to what we did with the A99, our full-frame flagship camera, Which we now very, be able to put quickly. the yeah. one of the fastest focusing SLRs ever made. We're actually able to put that technology in this little camera as well. So you're going to be able to get SLR performance, SLR focusing performance out of this little camera. So, so. For, for journalism or for just chasing a very fast toddler, this could yeah, be a great. Yeah, absolutely. This could be a great camera. So. All right, and there's there's one thing you know. I remember when the first mirrorless Sonys came out, the NEX five and the mm -hmm. three, and uh, everybody was wanting you know that that accessory that the, the viewfinder, viewfinder that clipped into the top. Everyone wants a viewfinder because to be honest, I mean, they have SLR image quality. All these cameras, the NEX line had SLR image quality, and now we get some of the best image quality that money can buy. Uh, so the camera does have an OLED viewfinder built in. Now I know when I say OLED, it is an electronic viewfinder and it does make some photographers a little nervous about an electronic viewfinder. Yeah, I mean, I remember so. the first electronic viewfinders that I ever looked through, there was lag or the image would smear mm -hmm. if I was Highlights would get blown out, yes. your shadows would get lost. So since it's OLED, we're able to keep an enormous color gamut. So what you see is exactly what you're going to get. And it gives so many more advantages than an optical viewfinder. You're able to just be able to concentrate on your picture taking instead of worrying about your equipment itself. So you can see where your highlights are actually going to be parked. You can see into the shadow. Yeah. In the finder, you can see like how exactly deep what that you shadows see go. is what you get. So if your picture is underexposed, it's going to be underexposed in the viewfinder. If it's overexposed, it's going to be overexposed in the viewfinder. So your white balance, your depth of field. Your video perform, or you can actually see video through the viewfinder. All these things can be seen through the viewfinder itself. So that way you don't have to worry about setting your depth of field. You don't have to worry about setting your white balance. You don't have to worry about setting your exposure. You can see that in the viewfinder itself. And you can overlay a histogram as well, so that way you can see exactly. For those people that really want as much control as possible, they can see a live histogram as they're shooting, so they can get their highlights where they want to be, they can get their shadows exactly where they want to be, and they can do basically not have any limitations. And if you're not a viewfinder type person, say you're, you're coming from the point and shoot or the smartphone realm, yeah. you can also use this nice, huge, yeah. bright. Yeah, and you get the rotating LCD viewfinder. The viewfinder is as good as it can get, but you know what? You're kind of limited to putting it up to your eye, obviously. So with a rotating LCD, an articulating LCD, you can put it above your head. You can put it down on the ground and be able to get that unique angle. 
So if you want to follow that toddler around or you want to be able to get above the crowd and be able to get um, the image that normally you wouldn't be able to get, you can actually see what you're getting and get full autofocus and be able to get that shot that's a little bit more unique than the standard shot up to your eye. I want to talk a little bit about convergence as well, because you can't buy a, a camera or a large sensor camera now that doesn't boast some type of video. Right. There seems to be a lot of compromises with those cameras that yeah. offer video. What's Sony doing that's different here? So even though it's one of the best still image quality that you can get in a camera, it's also one of the most powerful video devices you can get. So we talked about the full frame sensor. You can utilize the entire full frame sensor. You can get full autofocus in video. You can look at it through the viewfinder. But it also incorporates full AVCHD 60p video. So you're going to get 60 progressive frames, so really smooth motion. And for that traditionalist that wants to still keep 24p in that traditional video look, you can still have 24p, 30p, or 60p. Now, AVCHD is a fantastic like, consumer mm -hmm. file format because it it's small. You know, it it's is. not going to eat your hard drive for breakfast. And it doesn't sacrifice much quality compared to like those larger files that people are used to. But if you're, let's say you're a professional journalist or, or maybe you're making a, a feature film yeah. and, and you want to have more latitude in, mm -hmm. in the image, what, what can you do? So the, for the best, ultimate best image quality that you can get, you get uncompressed HDMI output on all these cameras, including the RX. So uncompressed HDMI output, what does that give you? That gives you full uncompressed 422 outputted video from all of our new cameras. So any kind so. of color grading or any kind of post-production that I want to do on the image, on it'll you. hold up. Yeah, it'll, absolutely. Oh, that's great. Now, a, a camera, a video camera, is, or a video image, the story there is only as good as the sound. And, yes. And you guys have really taken a lot of care in making sure there's a lot of options to get good audio into this. We have. Camera. So on all three of the new cameras, all three of them have um, headphone jack and they have microphone jack. So you're going to be able to look at your audio and be able to hear your audio as much as you want. They have audio level control built into the camera itself, so that way you can see exactly where your audio is uh, falling into the play, and you're going to be able to adjust that in the camera itself. And if you want to have even more control over the audio, through the multi-interface shoe, you can connect our XLR input adapter. So that way you can put on our XLR adapter on it and do whatever you want. So this little camera can give you the best image quality and video that you can possibly get. Let's talk a little bit about glass. Yeah. Because you guys have the A mount, you have the E mount. We're going to keep both of these around, I'm assuming. Is that We are. So we are into, this is a new lens system. It's an FE lens. And we're introducing five lenses now, five amazing lenses. And we're going to have 15 more lenses by 2015. That's a huge so roadmap. That's a big. huge FE full frame uh, E mount lens system. We're also coming out with, at the introduction of these cameras, a new A mount. So we're fully committed to A mount. We're coming out with a new 70 to 200 A mount lens that's weather resistant and much faster focusing. So it works with, works with object detection and face detection and things like that. So a terrific lens. So, and all these cameras, since E mount stands for 18, it's the first letter of 18, um, it enables you to pretty much adapt any lens you want to it. So it's a full frame camera. Let's say you have a Nikon system or a Canon system or a Leica system or a Hasselblad system, any lens that you can really think of, almost every lens out there, you can adapt to these cameras. So if you want the absolute best image quality possible, but you don't feel like buying a whole new set of lenses, which I can understand, you can adapt those lenses now and still and onto these cameras and still be able to get the best possible image quality and still use your lenses. And at launch, say, I want to use my favorite Sony lens, the 85. You have Ridiculous. this little adapter guy right here. This is going to ship when the this, cameras come out? Yep, this will be introduced at the same time. It'll ship when the cameras start to ship. It's an LAEA4 adapter. So why would you want something like this? It's actually got the same translucent mirror technology that's in, the, in our larger SLR cameras. So what makes these even more versatile, so for going around and carrying around, the focusing is unbelievable. And it's tiny. You can carry it everywhere you want. But let's say you have lots of A mount lenses. Let's say you have an A99 or an A77, and you want to be able, and you have those lenses, you want to use them on these cameras. You can adapt it with either the LA3 adapter or the LAA4 adapter. And what's unique about this, it actually has its own focusing system inside of it, its own phase detection autofocusing system. So the same system as what you get on the A65, you get in this little adapter. So you can turn this camera into a full fledged SLT camera and be able to get the same performance you get out of an A65 in this adapter with an A7 or an A7R. It's pretty amazing. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> well, let's talk about this guy over here. I, I love this camera, the RX10. Mm -hmm. And this has a huge focal range on it. 
It does. So we were just talking about moving lenses and changing lenses. A lot of people don't want to change their lenses anymore. A lot of people buying their first or second camera never actually change their lens ever again. So it kind of loses why you'd want to get that kind of ta camera. So with the RX10, it's that same unbelievable award-winning image quality that you get out of the RX100 Mark II, the back illuminated one inch sensor, 20 megapixels. But we did marry it with a 24 to 200 millimeter lens, but it's a fixed 2.8 across the entire range. And it's built around a lot of the same technology as our RX RX100 Mark II. Same so, sensor, one inch sensor. Same backlit one inch sensor, the back illuminated one inch sensor. So you're gonna be able to get image quality out of, even out of a sensor that's smaller than a traditional APS-C camera, but actually outperform competitors' cameras that are out there. Yeah, because um, looking at the super zoom market, everything's really, really tiny. Yeah, you use that little teeny tiny uh, <laughs> one over 2.3 inch right. sensor, so it's extremely small. Smaller, about half the size of your pinky nail, to be honest. Right. So the one inch sensor gives us a sensor that's at least four times the size of those point and shoot cameras. So higher ISOs, no problem. Yeah, and high ISO, and especially being the backlit sensor, it gives you unbelievable low light image quality, unbelievable image quality in general. But with the new lens and with the new sensor and the new processor, it also gives us the ability to focus as accurate and actually faster in a lot of situations than a traditional SLR can do. Yeah, I mean, the lens is really the, the high order bid, I think, of this it camera. Is. Maybe we can talk a little bit about of it. Of course. Some of the technology that you've built in here. So one of the advantages of this, a lot of the times people buy, or the first time buyer, or that second time buyer, they buy an SLR, and they buy it with a kit lens. That's just what you do. And a lot of people don't change that kit lens. But you know what? They want to be able to, and the kit lens is traditionally slow. It's like a 3.5 to 5.6, slow in aperture sense. So they can't do indoor sports. They can't do low light. And the question I'm always getting is, you know what, my images are blurry. You know what, a lot of the situations that we're in, if we're indoors, is low light. So we were able to put a really versatile 24 to 200 millimeter lens, but it's 2.8 throughout the entire board. So it's traditionally in a zoom lens, it's the professional's choice of wide aperture. So at 2.8, you're going to be able to get the, the, the entire range to be able to get really great depth of field and really great shooting even in low light. And your aperture? the manual aperture ring on yeah, this. Yeah, you saw that, huh? This blows my mind. This is, this is incredible. <laughs> Again, we're very, we're always thinking about video. We always want to make the most versatile cameras that we can make. So we do have the manual aperture ring for that real enthusiast that wants to be able to change their apertures. And, and you, you can, can hear that it clicks. Yeah, you can in feel it still. too. You can feel it as, as you're moving. So if you're the kind of photographer yeah. that's used to feeling your way through the lens, exactly. you know, you want to stop down by a stop. Yeah, you get comfortable with it. You hear one, two, three, it's a stop. One, two, three, it's a stop. So it's all in third stops. The it is in third stops. So, but let's say I'm shooting video. A click can be really yeah. arresting and, and, and very <laughs> jarring. And it, it yeah, you don't want to watch that video with the clicking going on. So what you can do is you can turn that click on and off. So when I'm shooting video and I'm panning through my scene, I'm able to turn that click off, and you'll be able to change your apertures while shooting video without having to get that click. No, I love which that. Which is pretty amazing. And to do to even further that, we actually have a neutral density, a four-stop neutral density filter built into the camera as well. Neutral density filter built into the camera. You don't have to carry an <laughs> extra one with you. Exactly. So that way you can shoot at wide open apertures, even in daylight. So that way you can shoot at 2.8. You might as well use that 2.8 lens even in daylight. So, and it's not just for that videographer that knows exactly what a neutral density filter is for. So even mom or dad shooting sports, the neutral density filter can be engaged automatically. It can know that you want to be able to shoot your video at 2.8 and it'll automatically engage itself while you're shooting someone playing sports in bright sunlight and be able to want to still separate your subject from the background. That's great. So anything from like your, your, your kids like ball game yeah. up to, I don't know, a press conference or yep. a concert or whatever you want to shoot, you can do. Unbelievably versatile. And it does look like a really small lens. Even though it's a one-inch sensor and it's fairly large for a point and shoot, the lens still seems fairly small. Yeah, I have this question for you too. Like I'm holding the camera and most most lenses, or most of these kind yeah. of like super zoom lenses they're, or cameras, they're very, very front heavy. Yes. And that's not the case here. So how did you pull this off? How we're able to do it is that there's a little bit more than meets the eye, no pun intended, but the lens actually, what you see, you can see where the sensor is inside the camera. The lens actually goes all the way inside the camera and that's how we're able to kind of miniaturize what the, the view of the lens. So a lot of that weight is built into the camera itself. So the body is magnesium alloy. It's also weather resistant. So it gives it a little bit more heft and a little bit a really nice feeling. But that lens also is built into the camera a little bit. So you're able to get a really nice, even feel on the, on the camera itself. Oh, I love so. that. I love that. Well, one, one other thing I wanted to talk about with these, like you're kind of today, like when you, when you make an image, sort of only as good as 
with the speed at which you can get it out. Yeah. We're all carrying around you know, cell phones, yes. tablets, lighter weight, yeah. electro you know, consumer electronic devices, and we've been sacrificing a lot of quality, I think, for the convenience of being yeah. able to share the image. But you've solved some of those problems here with these products. We did. All the new cameras, including a few of our old other cameras, have Wi-Fi uh, and NFC built into them. So that enables us to connect to your phone or your tablet, whether it be iOS or whether it be Android, and your, or even uh, Windows Phone for that matter, and you can actually connect to your phone or your tablet wirelessly and be able to share your images right there while you're shooting. And you can be able to share your 36 megapixel images with all your friends and all your social networking sites instantaneously. But you're going above and beyond because it's not just Wi-Fi built into these. There's that also near-field communication. Near-field communication, that's very good. So. It can be cumbersome for some people to be able to go into their Wi-Fi settings on their phone or their tablet and then set up the connection and set up the communication between the camera and the phone. So we have near-field communication. So if you have a device that has near-field communication, NFC, you can actually just touch them together, they automatically pair, and you're ready to go. So it's Newer extremely phones, easy. tablets, this is all coming. No yeah. passwords, and this exactly. stuff. It's all yep. proximity. And beyond just Wi-Fi, just for sharing your images, the Wi-Fi enables us to put apps on the on the on the uh, on the camera itself. So why would you want apps in a camera? It gives us the opportunity to do really unique things with a camera that you normally can't do. Like you can do customizable time lapse videos. So for those really cool time lapse videos where you take a picture every second or half second for as long as you want to be able to get those star images, you can do that in the camera itself. Or if you want to use your phone or your tablet as a remote control and not just be limited to a physical manual remote control, you can actually use your phone from far away, from a distance of like 50 feet, and be able to control your camera from your phone or your tablet. So this, you don't have to worry about it. And this also adds to the, the feature list of the camera because you're not locked into what it does. If somebody comes up with a great idea, yeah. they can just write exactly. an application that can go right to the camera. Yeah. Um, now, it's not just Sony that's doing these. You have this open? It is open now. So we announced that our API for the camera itself is completely open. So people, feel free to make whatever apps they want to make. As of right now, it's still fairly new, so no one's really come up with apps. But I'm sure once they see the magic of the A7 and the A7R, we're going to see a lot more apps come down the road. Oh, I, so. I think it's it's a first <laughs> being able to write yeah. applications for a, a full 24 for a camera. Yeah. Chip. That's amazing. <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, this is an amazing time to be a photographer or, or a filmmaker. There's so many wonderful tools, and they're just getting better and better. And these look great. You know, I, I can't wait to try some of these out. Now. Yeah, it's a real. It's an exciting time for Sony. It's an exciting time for the industry. We're really innovating and just trying to create uh, a new and exciting experience for the user. So. All right. Thank you so much for coming by, Mike. Thanks for having me. I'm David from B&H. We'll see you next time. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.